Well, welcome along to the latest uh, Forever Blue podcast. And as usual, I have three City fans here today, which is at the Holiday Inn near Central Park. Thanks very much for them. I'll mention the sponsors in a couple of minutes as well. And uh, the sponsor actually has something to say about the first topic that we're going to start with. So before I introduce these guys... Uh, I've done a couple of tweets this week which people have responded to. I've expanded on those tweets and uh, and actually written down just so many thoughts could be collected on what has been discussed recently. Uh, there's been a lot of stick given to City fans in the media, mm-hmm. from fans of other clubs, etc. And whilst I don't want that to be dominant in what we're talking about, because it's not the only thing that matters, I do want to address a couple of these subjects. And if City fans don't agree with me, then feel free to, to comment and, and to tell us what you think. But, and this is perhaps the one that other fans of other clubs might uh, laugh at or, or, or comment on, I don't know, um, and how some City fans might not agree with, but let's get it out in the open. United, Liverpool and Arsenal have much bigger UK and worldwide fan bases than City do. Chelsea and Spurs, being London-based, also have bigger fan bases. Two, although City fans were and are delighted by the huge investment made by the Sheik, a huge percentage of the match-going fans are still the same ones that were attending games before the club received a financial boost. There seems to be a lot of assumptions by the media, City as a club too, and rival fans, that while the club's fan base is growing, there's no doubt that it is, that those new fans are instantly converted into match-attending fans. Not true. Number four, United, Liverpool and Arsenal were in the right place at the right time. They were top dogs when the first division became the Premier League and it was exposed to a worldwide television audience. Um, All those who had no team or wanted a glamorous second team gravitated, of course, to the rich winning clubs of that era. And it was during that era when City had their worst era in, in the club's history. So they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. City have... 6.7 million followers on Twitter. Do the club and media seriously think that those followers or the millions that click like when one of the tweets of the type that fans so regularly like um, are are liked, do they think that those people, those 6.9 million are all match attending fans? This was the first tweet that I did. City fans are wonderful. For many years, they show great loyalty when times were tough. Just because the glory days are here now doesn't make them rich or available for every game, nor do they have suddenly multiplied in numbers. Now, given that City fans are mainly ordinary, older, yes, the average age is older, working people on a normal wage, how can you expect them to travel to Wembley twice in quick succession for a League Cup final and then FA Cup semi-final with a highly likely prospect in FA Cup final two, which of course turned out to be. That's not to mention European games, possibly all the way to the final. TV companies move games to suit advertisers and armchair fans. Ordinary people who attend games are expected to drop long-held plans, change family arrangements, book days off, off work and, of course, to attend every game. In the family stand, there are empty seats for all midweek games and that's because the next day often there is a school day and that's quite right. What responsible parent would take the kid out till 11 o'clock night, uh, at night on a school day the following morning? I agree with that. What's wrong with that? Supporters, usually armchair supporters of other clubs, uh, egged on by clickbait chasing TV, radio stations and newspapers, ridicule any empty seats, arguing that there should be enough fans to fill those empty seats. I'm the first to admit that City don't yet have enough match-going fans to fill in for those who can't make games. There's nothing to be ashamed of in that. I welcome the new City fans from all around the world. They're part of the City family. Once a blue, always a blue. But I urge City, the FA, UEFA and FIFA, and those who appear to have a negative agenda against City, to respect the long, rich history that our club has and not resort to cheap snipes. There's a certain irony, this is my final point, you might be glad to hear, uh, that uh, TV companies constantly boast about the quality of their comprehensive coverage and try to persuade you to watch it. And yet, when they do choose, that is City fans, to stay and watch the game on TV rather than go to game, they try to shame those 
who aren't in the stadium. Those people have chosen to save some of the, the money, the exorbitant pr- uh, prices that are charged at Wembley, or tickets in general. Uh, and given that the TV money that comes from that goes to the clubs, plus obviously there's extra costs for late train tickets, parking, in-stadium food and all the rest, those who get paid to go to games choose to ridicule them. Shame on you. My final comment is, which I tweeted, instead of one group of supporters, and this is the most important one really, trying to ridicule another over empty seats, and it doesn't matter who you are, all fans of all clubs should be protesting together about Wembley prices, TV scheduling, Wembley for the semi-finals and ticket prices for all games. But instead, it becomes a tribal argument. Yep. And although we're all blues, it becomes a tribal... And I find that sad. I think it's ridiculous. <laughs>